All right, so for your next step, you're going to, well, before you get your clay out, you're going to clean the surface with a paper towel, napkin, whatever. Um, you're going to clean your table surface to make sure there's no lint or, um, any, or dust or anything. Then if you want, just to make sure, you can get a little piece of clay and then kind of roll it up into a little ball and then just kind of roll it around the surface and just to make sure in case j just to make sure so that it doesn't get into your pro final product and yeah so once that is done put your clay down and if you have a Sculpey the Sculpey toolkit you are going to get your little pin and roll it out this is really nifty for when particularly when the clay is really hard i noticed in this my second packet um, the clay was harder than the first. The first was just right, and this one was harder. If you don't have this, then, well, you're just going to smash and kind of knead it out and straighten it out just as the best as you can. And once you have it all flattened out, you're going to wrap it around your little oval foil thing here. When you put it here, you're going to wrap it around and make sure there's enough clay so that for the next step when you sculpt, um, when you sculpt, um, there's enough clay so that when you do, it doesn't get down to the foil because otherwise, when you have to patch it up, it's a pain. So, yes, make sure there's enough clay on there. And also, when you're doing the tips like here, as you can see, for this little particular little chain link, I got halfway through the little chain link. And that's what you want, because then this top, the chain, little chain link above it, won't harm the clay. It won't bang around on it, because this is the other one that I had. I had to pull it out just so I could show you guys. And then, unlike this one, this one was the one I was using before. Um, yes, as you can see, this one, the top chain is banging around. Yeah, that's what you don't want. You're gonna want it to be like this not this. So once you're done putting the clay over your foil, let's move on to the next step. All right, for your next step, um, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna carve into here, into the clay, and make a little design. Because I noticed that um, in the game renderings from what I could see, there was um, some sort of design to it. I um, wasn't sure exactly, so I tried to mimic it well, I tried to mimic the shape as best I could, and um, I put a little design that I kind of came up and it was inspired by the first game's logo. So what I did is, I made the heart here. Um, the first one that I did was a little bit better, um, th but this one's okay. And I did the little swirl here and made the heart here. And then, what I did for around the entire part, the wool part here, is that I did different squirrel not squirrels, um, swirls that connected each other, that were connected to each other, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, but you can see the rips here from the, um, from the, the other items that I used to sculpt. Um, it, this ripping shouldn't happen with the special s sculpting tools or toothpicks. Hopefully it doesn't happen. Um, yeah, but it shouldn't. So, you what you do is for the swirls is that I started here from the top of the heart and I came, yeah, I came down here and then swirled up, and yeah, came down here and swirled up and then connected here and then did another swirl. I also started swirls from here from the bottom as you can see, and then connected swirls all throughout the piece, um, all as all the way around as much as I could. Of course, I didn't get here at the very tip or in this tip here. But yeah, try to get in as many swirls as you can, and then once you're done, we'll move on to the next step. All right, so your next step is to get your finished, well, somewhat finished product and put it on your cookie sheet or glass container. Um, I, you can also just put it straight onto foil but and cook it that way, but I put the cookie sheet and foil 
to make sure in case something goes wrong with anything so that it doesn't hurt the cookie sheet or my glass container. Um, it's okay, don't worry about being toxic because supposedly this polymer clay, um, oven baked clay is not toxic. So yeah, it should be fine, but I put the foil just in case. And then you're going to stick your clay into the oven. Well, obviously preheat it, the oven before putting your clay in. Then you put it for the set time that the instructions on the back of the clay will say. And then the minute you hear the oven beep, take it out because otherwise you can burn the clay. And so, yeah, you, we don't want that happening. So take it out and then let it sit for a while. Because the thing is, in that time the clay will be cooling down and so will the metal and everything so and by the don't touch it even don't even touch the clay because the thing is when it's cooling down that's when it actually hardens so yeah just leave it alone for however long it takes to cool it down and then you're ready for the next step so your second to last step will to be well will be putting your final little gloss coat um, I heard that you don't have to do it, but I highly recommend doing it because it get, makes it shiny and makes it look more metallic-y. Um, and to do this, um, if you're using the special clay one, you, you'll need a paintbrush for that, but otherwise you can use the brush that's for the nail polish. And what I recommend doing, which is what I didn't think of actually when I first did this, and I was holding it and painting it and trying to be careful it was really hard so what I recommend doing is I'm pretty sure you're gonna have extras of this clippy thing of these little clippy things and since there's a hook here hook it here you don't hook it here you don't have to close it and then do what I did and clip well for the other middle chain and clip it and let it hang there as you can see I let it hang there and then just paint it from there and let it dry um, don't touch it right away after you put when you dry let it dry for however long it needs to dry um, even though you touch it and it's dry the undercoats may not dry so give it a, a while to dry when you're doing this make sure to make to get the coat in the little carvings because if you just paint over it you might not get it so Take extra care when doing that. And once you're done painting, on to the next step. So your final step for this chain is to reattach it. So let's do that. So what you're gonna do is um, get the string here and kinda try to remember where you put it and then get your two skinny pliers can find mine. Oh, ha. Here we are. Ooh, that's not good. Okay, anyways. So you're going to get your little pliers. I'm actually switching. I'm going to have this one hold it and then pull with the one with the teeth. I'm going to try it this way this time and see how much better, if it'll work better or what. Then pull it open. Here we are. So you can see I have it open. And then get it here. Uh, huh. And get it here and reattach. It's kind of hard to see what I'm doing here, but pretty sure you guys are smart enough to get the picture. There you go. Now it's in the rope. And then I'm going to get my big pliers and try to clamp it together. Ah. Alright. So as you can see, it's in there. And let's kind of fix it a little bit. And then thread it kind of back in there. The hole should be big enough to where you can slide the rope back in there. And 
kind of stretch it out like you do the normal one and rinse and repeat for the other side and then you have your oval chains now let's move on to the middle chain shall we